We're back for Adaptive Immunity Part 2. All right, so we had ended with um, how a helper T cell gets activated. It gets activated by matching up with an antigen, and once it matches with an antigen, it becomes activated. Once it's activated, it makes a bunch of copies of itself. And then the activated army do three things. One is enhance activity of all immune cells, and the second is to stimulate cytotoxic T cells. So we'll put that here, number two. Cytotoxic T cells. And we'll tell you about what they do in a second here. And the third is to stimulate B cells. are another type of lymphocyte. So one is to enhance activity of immune cells, mostly uh, in, in like inflammation. Oops, I think I should put that on here. Inflammatory cells, that's the big part because it's going to encourage more inflammation while adaptive immunity is going on. Then these activated T cells will also stimulate cytotoxic T cells and also stimulate B cells. So those are the three jobs of an activated helper T cell. Enhance inflammation, stimulate cytotoxic T cells, and stimulate B cells. Now, they don't just stimulate any old cytotoxic T cell or any old B cell. They stimulate specifically ones that have that batch with the same antigen. So we're going to use orange like a pumpkin for our scary cytotoxic T cell. But you can use pink for that antigen which keeps showing up. So it's that same one that originally set off the helper T cell. And then the B cells, we'll put those in green. But even though they're a different kind of lymphocyte, they still will be recognizing that same antigen. So let's put that over here. So these different cells are activated and they have different jobs, but they were activated by the same antigen. Okay, then also with your orange pen, let's name these. They're called um, cytotoxic T cells. So they are a T lymphocyte, but they have a different job than a helper T cell. So we give them a different name. They also have a nickname of CD8. And that's because they have a docking protein, just like the helper T cells do, but it's a little bit different, weighs a little bit more. So it's called CD8 rather than CD4. And then the B lymphocyte in green, or just call it a B cell, that's fine too. And they have this CD8 cell here. So it's comparable to the CD4 cell, CD4 protein, sorry, that docks between the macrophage and the helper T cell. But in this case, this would actually be docking with a helper T cell. Okay, so now what does a cytotoxic T cell do when it is stimulated? So it's going to have um, the same. It's going to do the same thing that the helper T cell did. It's going to actively divide it's going to make a little army And all of those are going to recognize, you got it, that same antigen. This is all 
part of adaptive immunity allowing you to very specifically fight back against a specific pathogen. And then what these um, cells can do is directly destroy the pathogen. And that's why they're called cytotoxic. So the one that has the specific antigen that's recognized. And um, so we can either destroy the pathogen directly. Remember this guy? Here he is. He's a bad guy. Or, he's orange. So directly do that. Or what if this were one of your cells that contains the virus, or a virus, sorry, and that virus has this antigen displayed on its surface. Okay, so what a cytotoxic T cell can do is directly destroy the pathogen or stimulate apoptosis of a virally infected one. Apoptosis is programmed cell death. It's basically cell suicide. Okay, so you might have noticed that that's a whole lot of cells killing cells, right? So because of that, we call this arm of adaptive immunity, this like part of the battle, we call it cell-mediated arm of adaptive immunity. So turn your paper to the side like this, and we're gonna write that here in orange. So this is cell-mediated because it's mediated by those CD8 cells. Okay, and then put that in orange. Oh, my orange is not doing so hot, is it? Okay, good. So, meanwhile, back at the ranch, what is going on with the activated B cells? So, to remind you a little bit that the activated helper T cells enhanced inflammation, stimulate cytotoxic T cells, and stimulate B cells. The cytotoxic T cells can either directly destroy the pathogen or stimulate um, programmed cell death of a virus-infected cell. And then the B cell, is going to um, have its own job to do, which ultimately is about making antibodies. But it's the same pattern where, see the, the rapid division? We're gonna have that happening here too. Oh, and these cells right here I haven't talked about yet. Sorry, I'll come back to those. But we're still at that kind of the theme. They've been activated, so they rapidly divide to make a whole bunch of themselves. And what do you think that I need to stick onto these cells? I need to put on here that antigen again. And then when a B cell is um, activated, it will grow and get larger, which I didn't really show here in this picture, but they get bigger and they become plasma cells that pump out lots and lots of antibodies. So they differentiate. And then those plasma cells pump out antibodies. 
let's use purple for the antibodies. And it really is true that antibodies have a protein structure that's shaped a little bit like a Y. So we typically will draw them like that. So now, if the pathogen is roving around and it has that antigen on it, which it would. What was the other one I did? Oh. Then the antibodies will stick to it like this. When they recognize that, they'll stick all over it. And that has kind of two effects. The first effect is that it just sort of takes it out of commission. It can't really do what it wants to do anymore. And that, so first of all, that inhibits the pathogen's lifestyle. And then the second thing is kind of scary. It draws the attention of the ravenous macrophages. Maybe you didn't know this, but your macrophages have a favorite food. And their favorite food is antibody-encrusted pathogen. So let's draw the hungry macrophage right here. And we'll outline it in blue. It's the same kind that we saw at the top of the page. So it's sort of like completing the cycle. So a pathogen all on its own in a macrophage may or may not engulf. But if a pathogen is covered with antibodies, it's just irresistible to a macrophage. Okay, so now what you can see is that we have two ways of tackling specific pathogens. The first is by outright killing them. That's the cell-mediated arm. And the second is by making these antibodies that will indirectly end up with them getting killed because it draws the macrophages. So we call this part of adaptive immunity the humoral mediated. So we'll turn our page again and get your green pen. Humoral mediated. Sometimes we just call this antibody mediated. I wish that everybody would just call it that because that makes more sense. But you're still going to see humoral mediated um, in a lot of books. And then use your green highlighter to go around that. So basically, this is the B cells making antibodies. Okay, so if this wasn't all cool enough, the amazing thing about adaptive immunity is once this is all done and the pathogen has been taken out, you shouldn't get sick by the same pathogen again if everything worked well. Because not only did the activated cyto T cells make um, cells that were involved in the current fight, but they stocked away some cells for future invasions. So these are the memory cells. And these can potentially circulate in your blood for the rest of your life. And they are always vigilantly looking out for that antigen so that you should never get sick by that pathogen again. So these are memory cells memory, CD8 memory.
cells. And then you can probably tell where I'm going with this. The same thing happens with the B cells. And so these are memory B cells. Now, if you didn't have a strong reaction, maybe your body didn't make as many of these when you first faced the pathogen. So yeah, you maybe could get sick from that pathogen again down the road. But a really well-functioning immune system will make an, set aside enough of these memory cells that you won't get sick from that pathogen again. Oh, I wanted to tell you what this word humoral means. In ancient times, the word humor in Greek meant um, just fluids, like body fluids. And so they talked about the four humors, like black humor, green humor, yellow humor, and red humor. So red was blood. And that m these antibodies are carried in the blood. And so when scientists first started trying to understand about antibodies, they weren't, they weren't sure what was causing the immunity. They knew it wasn't directly a cell. It was something in the blood. And sure enough, it was these antibodies. And then over time, we've learned to understand that these cells are actually making the antibodies. But the name has stuck, just like an antibody does to a pathogen, humoral mediated arm of adaptive immunity. Just try and remember when you study that humoral means this is the antibody part, and cell mediated means the CD8 part where you have direct killing of pathogens.